Hey everyone, my name is Ronak. Back with another video, and in this video, you are going to learn the equalities of the hypothesis testing. So this is one of the most important videos of the hypothesis testing, I would say, and this is the thirteenth video in the playlist of statistics for CS applications. So let's get started. So equalities for hypothesis testing. So what are basically the equalities? Okay, so first let us understand with an example and everything that what are equalities and inequalities. So while formulating the null hypothesis, some rules are strictly imposed. Okay, so there are some rules which I have not covered in the last tutorial just because i don't wanted to in the first place give you a lot of rules okay so so in the beginning when you are going to learn the hypothesis testing the first thing that pops up into your mind is that there are a lot of things to digest okay so there are the these four steps and you have to remember a lot of formulas and how they interact with each other so that itself is tedious that is the reason i am covering the equalities in this video so these are some of the more rules i covered some of the basic three rules in the last tutorial but those are extremely basic. basic one okay you have to do those otherwise it is very hard for you to understand the hypothesis testing but equalities are now going to give you a better intuition of your rules okay so there should be no strict inequalities for null hypothesis i am going to discuss what is the inequalities and equalities okay inequalities in the hi null hypothesis are not equal to less than and greater than okay so these are the three inequalities that you can come across in the null hypothesis okay alternate hypothesis is completely fine there is not an issue okay you don't have to worry about it but the null hypothesis is definitely going to consider these three and these three are strictly not allowed if you allow this one in the null hypothesis your problem itself becomes a mess instead of that should be given by equal to greater than or equal to lesser than or equal to uh, like we saw in our last video my null hypothesis stated that the salaries are going to be less than or equal to 74919 dollars i didn't say that those are less than 74000 because that is an alternate case okay uh, in my null hypothesis i want to be pretty much sure with the mere assumption that i have and i want to adhere to those rules then only my hypothesis testing is going to be pretty much efficient i would say equal to basically is used for two tail test greater than or equal to is used for one tail left hand tests lesser than or equal to is used for one tail right hand tests and here i'll be covering one um, one more hypothesis problem i would say in which you are going to get a better intuition about the entire thing and in this one i am going to use the t statistic so there will be utilization of the equalities as well and and also the t statistic okay? and this is going to make your hypothesis testing base more powerful so assuming an average duration for phd students for completion of the dissertation across the world is greater than 2.8 years okay so our problem says that so this is the assumption that i have time taken by phd st students for completing their dissertation is definitely more than 2.8 years okay this is an this is basically assuming the average duration for this an average of research scholars with a sample of 40 people are taken so 40 people all over the world 40 phd students are taken okay so th those are known as the research scholars the average of the sample the average that i am taking of my sample okay just uh, check the words you have to learn to read in between the lines that is the reason i you know segregate the problem into specific uh, bullet points so that you can understand each and every single line separately because a single massive paragraph is pretty much hard to digest i would say so the average of the sample is 2.8105 okay that is the average of my sample that is x bar all right and my mu is basically 2.8 okay we will frame that later on but let us uh, look at the problem first the sample standard deviation is 0.29746 this is my sample standard deviation just mark the words okay this is sample standard deviation so the z statistic is not going to work over here why because for a known population standard deviation we don't use z statistic we use t statistic significance level is considered to be 5% yeah so my null hypothesis is where mu is greater than 2.8 years why because in order to complete the phd for the dissertation the average is definitely greater than 2.8 years that was my problem okay so i i framed it and my alternate hypothesis states that my mu is going to be less than or equal to 2.8 okay so 2.8 years some people yeah definitely they finished phd you know extremely brilliant people they they completed doctorate in less than 2.8 years so that is my alternate hypothesis but but just mark it is it valid okay in the problem it wasn't mentioned that the time taken by the phd students is greater than or equal to 2.8 years 
okay so here is a massive 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 inequality and you have to mark it okay so this is wrong this is this is just wrong okay please don't proceed with the problem if you come across an inequality because that is going to spoil your entire hypothesis the solution is just twist the values and the way you can do it is like this so null hypothesis where h not is equal to mu is less than 2.8 okay i am just interchanging the values that i have for h not and h a but the h not and h a convention stays the same just the values where i have so mu is greater than 2.8 and mu is less than or equal to 2.8 is interchanged okay this is the manner to formulate the hypothesis so that is the reason i covered this in my series okay i wanted to show you an aspect where you can come across even such problems and you have to be very 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 sure that you are not going to mess it now calculating the statistic since the population standard deviation is unknown use the t statistic we know that so this is the formula of the t statistics i have covered in the last tutorial itself and these are the values i am just replacing the values so 2.8105 minus 2.8 divided by my sample standard deviation that i have okay so those were the values I, that i had in the given itself okay so in the problem itself i mention all the values okay so for 40 mba students so n is 40 standard sample standard deviation was 0.297468 and 2.8105 was my sample average of the 40 student now let us move on to the significance level okay so i got the table from this particular website i have posted it on the right section of the ppt okay so yeah so this is the table and now we are going to use the table to find our significance value for the 5% confidence the critical value that i'll be getting there are two things that is the degrees of the freedom and the t confidence value that i have okay so considering the degree i am using 40 why because i have n samples as the 40 so basically the samples that range okay from i would say 40 so 40 is the generalized thing because from 30 to 40 there is a big gap and there are many more values but what they do is they give you the generalized values so from 30 to 40 so we consider the 40 itself because to 30 there is a big gap and to 60 there is a big gap okay so the values that are closer to the 40 are definitely going to stick with the 40 so 39 will be my degree of freedom why because this is a sampling method so which is n minus 1 but 40 minus 1 is 30 and so 39 is closer to 40 so i'll be using 40 okay and the second thing that we have to consider is the t value for 95% confidence so there are two things okay so there is one tail and two tail but this test is one tail test okay because we are checking the equation that it is relating to less than or greater than okay there is not equal to itself so 0.05 is the only one tailed thing i am going to cover here so my alpha is going to be 0.05 okay that is my rejection region for that and the value that i'll be getting is this one okay so from left and the right arrow we are going to match the value okay so in the particular row which has 40 and in the column which has t.95 okay so the value that i'm getting is 1.684 that is my critical value and now putting it over here so the statistic value that i got was 0.223244 okay my t statistic value and the critical region value the significance value that i'm getting is 1.684 for 5% significance level it is not exceeding that critical region so our hypothesis is going to be changed okay so you might have got the conclusion that we are going to accept the null hypothesis and null hypothesis states that the average time taken for a phd student to pursue doctorate is greater than 2.8 years so that survey done by the person a assumption was true okay and the person that was doing the alternate hypothesis that the phd can be finished with within less than 2.8 years was was wrong so alternate hypothesis was rejected null hypothesis was accepted so this is my decision since calculated statistic value is less than significance value the null hypothesis does not fall in the rejection region and we do not reject the null hypothesis obviously 0.22 was my significance value i am sorry my uh, statistic value and significance value was 1.684 and definitely it was less so yeah so my null hypothesis stays stationary and my alternate hypothesis is rejected so instead we reject the alternate hypothesis this indicates that the assumption of the average age of pursuing phd is more than 2.8 years all over the world 
I think I'm, you might have got a little bit of idea about hypothesis testing by now. Okay, so I have already made three videos. This is the third video on the hypothesis testing, and definitely I think you might have got something or the other from this video. Okay, so if you like my content, please do like the video, share the video, okay, spread the word, okay, and give it to the most needful people. And apart from that, please do subscribe to my channel, and I would suggest you to do that because if i'm posting any new video you will get the notification if you click on the bell icon also okay so i think i should be winding up now so thank you for watching goodbye